Hello my friends and welcome, this is the latest update on Ukraine. Let's go to the Kherson Oblast, where the heavy fight continues. Russia tries to get Krinky under their control again, sending lots of the forces. For today, there were 15 of the attack recorded in this place. Russia sends the enormous amount of the infantry forces, basically their soldiers, with almost no backup from the tanks and other armored vehicles. Yes, they also send those as well, but not as much much as around five days ago when their convoys were totally ambushed by Ukrainian armed forces. They were targeted somewhere on the way, not reaching the Krinky village, completely demolished by the FPV drones and artillery systems. It means that FPV drones and artillery plays a great role in this war. We also have the good news about the FPV drones and I'm gonna tell you that in this video. This photo was taken today in the Krinky area. This is the Russian armored vehicle. I think it's the last photo for it in one piece because it was taken from the FPV. I have to censor it a little because it's the dramatic image and they have lots of those infantry vehicles in the place. At the same time, after Russia lost three of their bombers, Suhoi 34, they have stopped using the aviation bombs in this area in all of the Kherson Oblast, so there were no any drops on Ukrainian positions registered today. That's the good news, but the bad news that they intensified the attacks on the Krinky using infantry and some of the armored vehicles, trying to compensate the loss in aviation. Here we have the statistics for the Krinky battle losses since October 14. The statistics goes for both of the sides, the vehicle losses just, and Russia lost 65 of the vehicles, Ukraine lost zero, because we simply do not have the infantry vehicles or some of the tanks across the Dnieper River. We have just infantry, we have just our soldiers over there, mostly marines. There was the information that Ukraine sent some of the armored vehicles across the Dnieper, but we don't have the real confirmation about it. So in the failed attack attempts, Russia lost 13 of the tanks and 38 of the armored vehicles. Plus some of the artillery systems, those were kaboomed by Ukrainian FPV drones and not only. Still, it's the miracle for me of how our guys are capable to withstand the ground in Krinky because Russia definitely pushes a lot. Yesterday I watched some of the terrible images of our wounded soldiers delivered from Krinky to Kherson hospitals and my friends it's terrible definitely to watch. We have losses there unfortunately many of the guys wounded then you say wounded it's like the word but then you watch the video of our soldiers well it's hard to describe it over here but it's it's very terrible the war is terrible itself do i expect that russia finally might take this bridgehead under their control i think that it is the possible wherein because ukraine wasn't able to dig down to the ground creating the defense lines in this place. So potentially Russians might break through and in that case Ukraine will just send more reinforcements but whether it helps or not only time might show. Alright finally we have the confirmation about the Russian failed attack attempt on Sinkivka. We have the full video of their attack that happened around a couple of days ago. My friends we also have the confirmation of the Russian attack in Sinkivka which is failed as usual but before we go to it let me me tell you about the sponsor and also the long-term partner of my channel the Atlas VPN. You're probably aware that Christmas is very soon, so to be more precise, I think it's today. That is why Atlas VPN came out with a Christmas deal that was made especially for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium just for $149 per month, plus you have one year, so 12 months extra. It is the best offer on the market right now from all of the Premium VPN services. And believe me, Atlas VPN is on top of the list. It has military encryption standards strongly securing your data and your devices from being reached by government, unwanted ads and also hackers. I use the VPN all of the time and for me personally Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very 
very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection than you watch movies on Netflix. And also by changing your virtual location, you may get access to watch all of the movies, all of the series on Netflix platform. And now my friends, please go to my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Auto Super Premium just for $149 per month plus 12 months extra. If you do support the Auto Super, you also support my channel plus many of the charity programs which Atlas European participate. For example, the last year they donated 1 million euros for the Ukrainian army raiders. It was a huge fundraise in Lithuania. So what happened to Sinkivka around three days ago? Russia started their massive attack using the big convoy to attack our village and take it at least partially under control. You may see how it looks from the Ukrainian drone perspective. The video is expedited a little for you to understand the scale of the Russian attack. So Russia has lots of the vehicles out there. Those are BMPs full of infantry and tanks just in the front to break the Ukrainian defense. It's the usual tactics. So their goal was to reach Ukrainian positions, attack our guys with the tanks, land infantry and with the backup of the fire from the infantry vehicles and tanks take the village under control. Let's see what happened actually. So tanks were on the front. The front tank, as you can see, has a demining plaque, but there are no any explosions on the way, which I think is very strange. So Ukrainian army definitely hadn't mined this field. Hmm. They covered quite a lot of the distance and actually reached their village from those forest lines. So this is Zinkivka, the village frontier. But a little later, Ukrainian side opened the artillery fire and Russians, Russian vehicles, it's better to say, decided to retreat to some of the point and half of the convoy was ambushed by the Ukrainian side. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible for our guys to avoid the direct fight with infantry in the village, but our soldiers prevailed and pushed Russian army away from the village. So it was the unsuccessful attack by the Russian army, but at the same day, later on, Russia sent just the infantry forces again through the same route and they were totally devastated by Ukrainian fire. Again, the Russian crazy attack continue. Also, we have some of the good news that Ukraine was able to repel the Russian attack in Khromove. So it was the morning update today. There was the Russian assault towards, let's say, Chasiv Yard direction, but Ukraine was able to fight back and retake the previously lost positions. So this is the new update. Our guys went to Khromove suburbs again. So this morning and this evening. I think we were successful because Ukrainian army Army used the higher ground in this place. So this is Kromova, it's under the Russian control, but still the heights are under Ukrainian control mostly in this place. That is why Ukraine has the advantage in firing towards the Russian positions. As I told you yesterday, Ukraine was successful near to Klishivka and some say no, it's the Russia which gained the territories, but if we go to the map, legend reported Ukrainian territorial gains in the past 24 hours dark blue color, dark blue color. It means that Ukraine took the ground. The early morning Russia also had the attack towards Spirna or somewhere in this place, but till the evening time Ukraine was able to get the positions back. So again, the good news for our army. But what's about the major hotspot Avdivka? There were no changes in this place. However, if we go to Mayakovsk source over here, you might see that Russia probably gained some of the territories over here. However, Ukraine fights back even with tanks and artillery. We have surveillance flying everywhere and Russian tanks are burning in this place. So I do expect one more failed Russian attack. Overall, the Russian attack operation in Avdivka was planned very poorly. I think if it was the Wagner army or something like that, it could have been done in a better manner for Russia. But what they have is what they have. The old school dinosaurs who are commanding their army, who continue to form long convoys to attack Ukrainian positions, and usually they lose those convoys. So the incompetence of the Russian military command plays in favor of Ukraine right now. So we are very lucky that the Wagner army 
doesn't help that much this year. Nevertheless, Putin gave the main order for the Russian army to get Avdivka under control till March, so till elections in Russia, he needs to show that he gained something, just one town. They'll present it as their big victory. Unfortunately, as I said to you before, Ukraine wasn't able to build the huge defense lines in this place and the ones that were built over here are mostly penetrated by the Russian army already. So it is still a big mystery for me of how Ukrainian army keeps control over this city under this huge pressure. Nevertheless, it's time to build the defense line somewhere in this area because Russia finally has big chances to have this town encircled or they might push away our army little by little like they did in Bakhmut. I say it like it is, knowing the actual picture on the front lines. Ukraine definitely has 50-50 chance right now to secure this town. From the strategic perspective, this town plays a great role. Compared to Bakhmut, it is a very, very important town. Why? Because Ukraine might potentially use it to start the counterattack towards the Russian positions. Again, potentially, we do not have the resource right now but we might do it in several years or something. It is very close to Donetsk, to Makivka, to Horlivka, so it's like the big fist inside the Russian defense. If Russia takes it, they'll secure Donetsk and all the settlements around. Plus, it's the big hub, you can see the crossroads and different connections which are going through this town. So it's very important to keep it under control. But again, it's very hard to predict the outcome. Well, anyways, this winter will show us the results. Yes, we know that the German build is not the reliable source, however, they refer to some of the European intelligence services that Russia might try to attack Europe the next winter. According to their information, Russia is going to use the transition period of power in the United States. As it is expected by many of the experts, the White House administration might change the next year. So Putin is eagerly waiting for it. Could he try to attack, for example, Poland or Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia? Yes, they might try to do it. You might say that those are the NATO countries, but Putin always tests collective vest for their reaction. Now he sees the decline in the military support of Ukraine, that is what he was waiting for. It is one more signal that he does everything correctly, according to his sick logic, obviously. Would the other NATO members act in case Russia attacks, for example, Lithuania? Well, it is the unprecedented possible action, and the Article 5 of the NATO state has never been executed in the human history. Yes, according to the book, NATO countries should defend their allies, but who knows? Would the other countries agree to send their forces for the direct direct fight with Russia in that case to defend some Lithuania somewhere. Yes, I know that we have the respected and educated audience on my YouTube channel, but if you ask average American or Canadian where is Lithuania, they would hesitate to show you it on the map, so why would they defend it themselves? I think that it would be hard to convince them that it is the interest of the United States of America, for example, to not let Putin win. But again, even with Ukraine, some people on the West say that the military support of our country should be abandoned. Moreover, politicians speak about it. Yes, for now they are still in minority, but you know, time goes and people, from what I see, they got tired of this war. And that's Putin's goal, actually. One year ago, who would have thought that there would be the huge crisis about the military support of Ukraine in the United States. Hmm, strange. Unfortunately, it's the downside of democracy, I would say. Yes, it has more pluses compared to autocracy, but autocracy has the fast decision-making. If Putin decides to do something, he orders it and it will be executed. How well it will be, it's the other question. We witness what is happening in Avdivka, Russia struggles over there, but nevertheless, they have the order and they go and go, wave by wave. If you think that Putin will not attack the NATO member countries, probably you're right. Nevertheless, there is still a chance and from what I see, only Poland from the neighboring countries with Russia is getting ready for the possible assault, for example, from the Belarus territory. They renew and reform their army, they buy new modern equipment for it, lots of the tanks and artillery systems that might stop potentially the Russian aggression. So I don't think that Putin will try to go to Poland, but to some other countries, 
he might do it, unfortunately. At least we should be ready for that scenario as well. One more oil depot was targeted in Ilovaisk, the Russian-controlled territory of the Donetsk Oblast, so Ukraine day by day is cutting the Russian oil supplies and the ammunition warehouses, and that in turn postpones the Russian main attack in Avdiivka. Alright, about the FPV drones, we have two of the good news. The first one, that Ukraine start to use the FPV drones with the night cameras, night vision cameras or thermal cameras during the night time. However, those drones are quite expensive because of that equipment, that's why only the special forces are using those. The second good news is that the advanced visual recognition software was developed, so it will be used by Ukraine for sure. It is not yet the artificial intelligence, but what it does, for example, here we have the tank, maybe. So the FP drone sees this tank and memorizes the data, the visual data of the tank, the size, how it looks on the video, and then it flies towards it. And even if you lose the signal with the help of the Russian electronic warfare, still drone autonomously will go and target the target. Well, actually that feature was developed long time ago and actively used in DJI with active track. You may set the symbol of human or the vehicle and drone will follow you. The similar stuff will have over here, so the drone operator might fly at a certain height above the electronic warfare dome. Next, the operator will decide what target should be hit and just press the button. So the drone flies to execute the mission. The good thing here that the electronic warfare in this case is just useless. The bad thing that Russia also developed this kind of the system, mostly using the Chinese technologies. So who is fast with this new feature will have the huge advantage on the front lines. Unfortunately, Ukraine still doesn't have the government program and all of the stuff, like more than 90% of what is happening around the drones, still because of the volunteers, volunteer help, volunteer support, volunteer development. The Ukrainian government as itself is very volatile structure, it's very hard to implement the new ideas. Okay, it seems like Russia continued to dig the ground even during the winter time. They're now building the huge defense in Tokmak. It's the castle. I honestly out of clue of how many forces Ukraine needs to take Tokmak under control with all of those defense. Plus, they are building the new line over here since they lost the part of the line in this place. So the defense of the region is just crazy. To reach Tokmak, you need to cross several of the defense lines and there's the huge line in Tokmak itself plus Melitopol. So it is quite unreal scenario for Ukraine to attack at the same spot the next year or the next years, I would say. But you know what? Remember how Russia built the defense lines, for example, in Chernobyl? And after all, they were forced to retreat from this area. So the defense lines over here would mean nothing if Russia voluntarily withdraw their forces from the place. How it might happen? Well, there are different scenarios. We're gonna speak about it in our future videos. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video. By doing so, you help a lot to my channel. Thank you so much for it. Also, please check out my personal link in the video description just below where you may find the Atlas VPN with a huge Christmas discount. By the way, Merry Christmas for you. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.